episode. Today we are joined with the man himself, Mr. Ian Rappaport. Ian Rappaport is an NFL Network insider. You can follow him on Twitter at Rapsheet. You can see Ian every Sunday on NFL Network's NFL Game Day morning at 9 a.m. Thank you again, Ian, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Absolutely, guys. What's going on? You guys been well? We've been okay. We've been okay. It's been a jam-packed football season so far, I think, going, going into week seven. What are your thoughts so far this season? Um, it's been kind of awesome, yeah. right? Like, it, it's, it's really interesting because, you know, you can't control what it's like on primetime games. You put good matchups in there, and you sort of, like, hope it's good and whatever. This year has been some of the best primetime games I can ever remember in my, like, 10 years doing this. It has been unbelievably enjoyable and intense and fun. And there's been some great offense, but it's not just been that. I mean, we saw the goal line stand by the Tennessee Titans last week or whenever that was, Monday. I mean, it's, it's to me, like, the football has been awesome. Um, you know, the drama, the John Gruden stuff has been fascinating and troubling and um, all of those things. But I feel like it's been a, you know, pretty good and enjoyable season. I I think it's been great. Ian, to kind of branch off of what you just said about the John Gruden situation, is there any updates that you've heard about the Raiders' head coaching status as of right now? No, I think what they're going to do is they're going to get a com a committee of like elders, like convene a committee essentially um, to kind of advise Mark Davis. And they're going to go about the process of trying to find a new coach. Um, you know, there's, there's still some finishing touches to do on John Gruden. They need to finalize a resolution, a settlement, figure out how much he's getting paid. They'll do all that. That'll probably take a couple weeks or maybe months. And then it's just calling candidates. And, you know, if there's anyone out of football that they could talk to right now or in college football, they could theoretically talk to that person. Anyone in the NFL, they could not talk to. Um, but they can get their list ready and start preparing. And that's, you know, it's not, it's not what you want. You don't want to have a coaching, you know, vacancy in week seven, but it's what it is right now. So um, there's really no choice but to kind of make the best of it and start preparing. So I wanted to ask, uh, in, in this recent week, Cam Newton has been circulating in the, in the talks of conversations of teams uh, the Seahawks uh, and the Lions. So I kind of have two questions that tie to, you know, tying it to one. The Lions, Dan Campbell, you know, we are from Detroit. So we had uh, that, that press conference that was very, we, we didn't know what to make of it, right? He was talking about Jared Goff right. and the quarterback situation. And we also have Cam Newton in the quarterback situation. He's vaccinated now. The Seattle Seahawks have a rose as a team. The Lions, we don't know. Any update with Cam Newton and like the Detroit Lions situation, do you think? Uh, as far as the Seattle situation, doesn't sound like they're signing. I mean, I know there was some interest. I know they talked to him, but you know, the hope is that Russell's back sooner rather than later. And, you know, if Russell Wilson misses two games and then they have the bye, two more games and they have a bye, then he comes back, it's a really worth signing starter for that. I would, right. I would argue probably not. Um, as far as the Lions, like, I kind of don't understand why they would sign him either because the Lions record is not very good. No. Their season is not going well. <laughs> They're headed toward, I think that's fair. They're headed toward, you know, a top, three pick potentially we'll see if they turn around but that's what it looks like right now so why would you sign a bridge starter or whatever cam newton is right you know if you're gonna lose you try your best you try to do a full evaluation of everyone including jared goff but just do the best you can and just lose you know so try to win but it's just bridge starter makes no sense for the lions considering where they are roster wise and in their turnaround. But let's say you bench Jared Goff. Let's say you say, all right, you know, the trade we made was really through the two ones. Goff was like a throw in. It's fine. He didn't work out. But then like, what do you do? You right. just start David Blau. So then David Blau is going to prove what, I mean, he's probably a, you know, a backup slash maybe bridge starter if everything goes well, but you still need a quarterback. Right. Like you're not going to go into next season being like, we got Blau, we're good, unless he does something crazy. So then it's like, and then you're definitely moving on from Jared Goff. No one's going to trade for him with fully guaranteed money. So then you have to cut him at the end of the year and eat the salary. I mean, it's all sorts. Benching Jared Goff, if you have to, then I guess you do it. But there's not a lot of good that comes along with that. Right. True. Ian, to get to another football question, it's no secret that the Houston Texans are <laughs> – currently find themselves in quite the predicament with the Deshaun Watson situation. Do you have any updates on us on Deshaun Watson's future in the NFL? Well, um, 
I think he's going to play in the NFL. I just don't think it's going to be for the Texans. And as far as I can tell, you know, there really hasn't been any movement toward a trade. I mean, there's certainly teams interested. Um, certainly the Texans are willing to do it for the right price. Um, I just don't know that. I don't know when it's going to be, and I don't know if it's going to be. I mean, the trade deadline is um, 13 days away mm-hmm. as of right now on Wednesday. You know, my thought all along has been around the time of the trade deadline, we're going to know for sure whether or not something is happening. But as of right now, I honestly don't know which way it's going to go. And I think, you know, again, hopefully clarity as we get closer, but, you know, he's got – it's extremely up in the air right now would be the way I would describe it. So, like, I know that the Miami Dolphins were, like, one of the teams that were, like – they were earlier in the process of, you know, looking for a quarterback. Do you think, do you think they would still maybe be looking for a quarterback, even with Tua coming back and with that loss they had, that was, that was crazy loss this weekend. I've never seen. It was crazy, but, but I thought Tua played pretty well. He He wasn't perfect, Mm -hmm. but I thought he played pretty well. You know, would they be interested? I mean, I'd say maybe, you know, Mm -hmm. probably for the right price, like, like a lot of teams, but so much has to come together for a trade to actually happen. You know, we'll see if that actually happens right now. They're moving forward with Tua. That was a bad loss. I mean, that bad. was a bad. That was a bad loss. That was. That was um, awesome. I don't. I don't think it necessarily means they have to end their season. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll see what happens this year. But the extra game kind of makes me want to cancel fewer teams because you know you have you have a couple teams that I thought would be good that are not. The Giants are one. The Dolphins are another. Um, there's still time to kind of turn it around. So I'm not sure I'm ready to cancel their season just yet. Mentioning Jacksonville getting a win over Miami this weekend. And the head coach of Jacksonville, Urban Meyer, uh, shaky start to his NFL coaching career. Do you have any word on how Jacksonville's feeling about Meyer right now, uh, considering everything that happened in that bar in Jacksonville? What's the word on Urban Meyer? Well, I think they're probably feeling a little bit better now than they were a couple of weeks ago. Um, they won a game and look, he is not perfect. And I think he obviously made some mistakes and he owned up to them. He was upfront and honest with his team, with his owner in several meetings with reporters, family wise as well. I mean, this, you know, it was not nothing. I, I don't think anything good came out of that situation, but I also don't think it was particularly fatal. I mean, there's various arguments you can make. It was honest. You know, it's a personal situation, involves his family, so that's kind of weird. So I don't think the, te- the Jaguars were going to fire him for that. Right. Um, he didn't fly home with the team, which was a stunning lack of leadership. But, you know, he kind of owned up to it for his te- in front of his team, and he won a game. So, you know, if they go 1-16, do I think he's safe? Like, if they go 1-16, we'll see what happens. Right. But I don't know that it's something that's going to force everyone to – kind of make a rash judgment like we thought it would be a couple weeks ago. So I, although we are in Detroit, I am a loyal to the Kansas city chiefs. They are my team. Um, you know, we went to the super bowl last year, you know, I was able to, I know, I know he's like, what? I know, I know. That's weird. It's really, I did weird. not know that. Yeah. I, Ian, we don't know either. We, we have, ask we this are. guy all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, my office has Kansas city chiefs stuff everywhere. So what are your thoughts on the chiefs so far? Do you think that this, th- this has been painful for me to watch? Every Sunday, I don't know. Going to Tennessee this week, it's a it's up and down. It's up and down. I don't know where to start, honestly. You know, this is what it's like for most fans, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Th- I know. Thank I, you, thank I you know. for pointing that out. Yeah, I know. And then we talked about the lines too and all that, but it's just this is tough for me. This is tough. Well, I would say with all due respect, too bad. Um, <laughs> I knew that was that's coming. what it's that's like. Right. That's what it's, it's like coming. for most people. Um, I think the Chiefs are going to be fine. I mean. Are they, are they dominant right now? No, obviously not. But I still see all the stuff that makes them good. I still see, I mean, Patrick Mahomes being amazing. I still see all the, the kind of tools to be a dominant team. They're just not right now. And that is okay. I mean, they're not perfect. They're not going to be just a runaway train. Um, if they win this year, they're going to earn it. Um, and I think the defense is slowly starting to get a little better. They made a key move last week by benching Sorensen. That was good. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I think by the end of the year, we're going to look back and be like, and view this as just a hiccup rather than indicative of what the Chiefs actually are. So I wonder at the end of the year, are we going to ever look back on Eric being an enemy and see that he's like 
in a new role maybe, or like, a, I, I just see, I just feel like there's so many positions opening up and potential places for him to go that Kansas city can't be holding on to him much longer. And that hurts me and pains me to say, but that's just my thought. I don't know if you guys well, think of anything. I mean, I don't know. Like I thought last year he might get a job. I thought the year before, you know, something is obviously not going right. Right. Um, and there are, you know, other minority coaches who are getting jobs. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, you know, David Cully got one interview and got the job. Right. You know, so I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I would like him to get a job because I feel like he's qualified. I wish yeah. he was. I just after last year, I just, I don't know that this is going to be the year. Do you? Ian, our last NFL question, uh, the, Cle- uh, the Cleveland Browns have really, really made strides as an organization over these past couple of years. Currently, you know, they find themselves on a two-game losing streak, getting into the injury bug. I mean, the injuries are, are running around the team. How confident do you feel? I mean, I know a lot of people were putting the Browns in that Super Bowl bubble preseason. Here we are at week seven, about halfway through the season. How do you feel about the Cleveland Browns currently? Um, they, if they can get through this, they're going to be okay. Like this is a rough stretch. Like Baker's probably playing Thursday, but honestly, who knows? Like he's got a torn labrum on his left side. Chubb is out. Kareem Hunt is out. They're going to have to make do for a little bit. I mean, it's, this is not easy, but you know, they're going to have to get through it. If they can get through Thursday night and somehow, some way, <clears throat> then I think they're going to be all right. And, you know, I don't know that all the injuries are, devastating like Baker's injury is tough but if he's okay then he'll get better by the end of the year tighten up the left side strengthen it do his rehab all that they just got to get through this so um you know it's not like a series it's not like the Ravens where you have this endless series of season ending injuries it's more like stuff that keeps guys out a couple weeks it is a long season if they can get through this I think the Browns will be okay I was terrified when I saw Kareem Hunt go down with, with a non-contact injury and he, and he pulled his back of his leg. That terrified me, but I was happy to see him. He's okay. It's just a calf injury. And Jarvis, right. I think it's, Jarvis is coming back this week from my understanding, correct? He is playing, I think, Thursday. Uh, I believe that is the plan, yes. Okay. All right. You know, for me, I mean, it's, every week is the same in the NFL, barring some sort of crazy John Gruden news. So, yeah. You know, I'll be on TV all day today. I'll gear up for Thursday night football Thursday. Friday is when I basically, I'm on TV also, but I'll spend my day preparing for Sunday. Mm -hmm. Who's playing, who's not, what stories. Saturday, I'll be on the sports fields watching my six and eight-year-old play. Flag football, soccer, um, all sorts of good stuff. And then Sunday, you know, we're on the pregame show and we go at it again. It's a great week schedule because I got my little moments of, of fun plus work, but it's always a little crazy.